Hi, this is Kim Wright, and I'm here to talk about the fourth book in my City of Mystery series, which is City of Bells. And it's set in India, obviously. I hope those of you that read it enjoyed it. And it was really fun to do this book because it was really fun to feature Geraldine and kind of make her the star of this book because I love Jerry. I think a lot of the uh, and my readers really love Jerry. And I started thinking about, you know, we're used to the Jerry who's 80 years old and eccentric and incredibly comp, you know, confident because she's an heiress and she's got all this money. And I thought, wouldn't it be kind of interesting if this woman, if we went back into her past and she had a long ago, long lost love, and um, then I started thinking, okay, how would she have had the long lost love? Where would she have had him? Why would he contact her after all these years, 50 years later? And I thought, well, what if her long lost love was, you know, on trial for murder? And he knew that Geraldine was associated with Scotland Yard and he turned to her for help. So I just thought that would be kind of a fun, interesting premise that Geraldine would get them all fired up to go to India. Why did you choose India as the location? Well, I mean, it was kind of challenging because I've never been to India, so I had to do a lot of research. But the, you know, the British um, ruled India at that time, and so it seemed like kind of an obvious place, like in a way, to, to set a book because um, India was under British control. And I started reading about it, and it was like really fascinating. The, the Indians didn't necessarily want to be under British control, so the the there was a lot of uh, it was just a time in crisis. There was a lot of activity and violence. And I did a lot of research in like the well in Kapoor, all that stuff about the uprisings and the mutinies. Because the British ruled with, a, with an iron fist. They were cruel and unkind to the, to the Indian populace. That's true. All that stuff is true. So it was one of those books that like, you know, what I made up was actually less horrible and less violent than the real stuff. And it was also really interesting to me that like, the British who went to India tried to act like they were still in England. It was just a really hot version of England. So when I uh, invented like the Pakula Club and all that, that actually was very much the way it was. That they would get there and do the best they could to pretend that they were still in England, which must have been pretty challenging being in India. So there's a lot about India in that period that was just big to have a book written about it. You've said before Jerry is your favorite. Was it fun to write about her? Yeah, it really was. It was fun to imagine like the young Geraldine. And so to kind of, for the first time, really get to know her backstory and see the Geraldine that fell in love. And the thing about, one of the other things that's, that's real in the book is the fishing fleet, which is, you know, like if you were a woman who wasn't married in London, like in the 1830s or 40s when Geraldine was a young woman, you could go on, on the fishing fleet because there were so many British officers in India that they were like 20 to one more men than women. So any woman who found herself unmarried because she was unattractive or unappealing in some ways or she didn't have family money or she was like Geraldine and just too independent to get married uh, could join the fishing fleet and sail to uh, India where your odds were really good with a 20 to 1 ratio that you'd end up with some kind of husband. And I thought, well, Geraldine wouldn't have done that. She was way too proud and independent to, you know, go husband hunting. But I thought she might tell her parents that she was going husband hunting when she really just wanted to see India. And she might have started out on this grand adventure and ended up really, she did fall in love. And um, so that was, a, that was a fun backstory to create for her. Poison is a major weapon in this book. Can you tell us more about the research you did on that? Well, if you ever want to poison anybody, go to India. Uh, I repeatedly, you know, uh, saw when I was doing research, India is a poisoner's paradise. There are like more toxic plants on the subcontinent of India than anywhere in the world. So yeah, it was a, it was a really, um, it, w it was the weapon of choice in that part of the world because there were so many poisons that were so prevalent. And you know the British weren't used to um, England, to Indian curry, so they couldn't. You know they, they were spicy; they couldn't taste what they were eating. And yeah, there was a lot of poisoning. That was another thing I didn't have to make up. It was uh, really common. Also, um, a lot of the English that were there were addicted to drugs because there were a lot of Indian drugs too that they weren't accustomed to. So all that was was very real. The bad guy here is a little unusual. Can you tell us more about that? Well, I. 
I think one of the reasons that this book is one of my favorites is I really love my bad guy and I won't identify the person because maybe some of you haven't read the book but maybe of all my bad guys this might be my favorite and as a writer I've got this theory on bad guys I don't think the bad guy knows he's the bad guy I don't think he gets up in the morning and rubs his hands gleefully together and says I am a villain and I'm now gonna go out and do villainous things uh, I think the bad guy feels completely justified so I always like to write chapters from the villains point of view and you know write them in first-person voice and bring you inside the villains head and that's not always easy to do I mean in the first book obviously Jack the Ripper is the villain so you're gonna set out trying to make Jack the Ripper not sympathetic exactly but kind of tell his part of the story you really kind of have to work to do it. But I always work on the theory that the villain feels like, you wouldn't believe what I've been through. If you knew how I'd started out and how many times life has kicked me in the teeth, and if you knew, you know, it from my side of the, you'd see my side of the story if you'd walked a mile in my shoes. So in this case, I think the villain actually does have pretty good reason to be angry that they could make a very good case that they were abused and ignored and, and badly treated so it was really fun with this particular villain um, I felt a lot of sympathy for this particular villain and kind of in a weird way pulled for this person <laughs> for part of the book a couple of the people that are bumped off are not that likable so you could argue in this case the the killers more likable than the victims and what's next what is next is City of Stone which is set in Edinburgh Scotland and I got the idea for that one because it actually features as a character, Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote the Sherlock Holmes series. And at this time in, in England, Sherlock Holmes was huge. And he, it was kind of, uh, Doyle actually kind of wrote the Sherlock Holmes series as a tribute to Scotland Yard. He loved Scotland Yard, but the detectives were kind of like, oh my God, he's making us look like fools with this detective superhero. So Conan Doyle actually has someone who starts who's a fan of his who reads his books and starts reenacting his crimes in Scotland where Doyle was from and of course Trevor Kent and Rayleigh are on the boat headed to Edinburgh Scotland to find themselves in a real-life Sherlock Holmes story